Hello and welcome to lesson eight on learning how to program using Scratch. Now in the last lesson we looked at a range of mathematical things that we could do such as adding, multiplying, dividing and also using relational operators so we could see whether numbers were greater than or less than another number or indeed if they were equal to it. We've also looked at selection statements and how we can get the computer to decide what to do next depending upon uh, different things. In this lesson, we're going to actually build our first game. It's going to be a guessing game, a numbers game, a kind of higher, lower game. So we'll get the computer to pick a number at random and not tell us, of course. We will then have to enter what number we think the computer is thinking of, and it will tell us either that we're right, or it will tell us that we are too high or that we are too low. So let's have a look at how to uh, start building this game. I've got a blank game set up here. So I have a new backdrop. I've got a new sprite Frank set here and he is ready to start thinking of numbers. So to begin with, we're going to grab the green flag block and stick that there at the top. That's how we'll start the program. Now the first thing we'll need the program to do, or Frank in this case, is to think of a number. But of course, if we get the computer to think of a number, we do need to store that number somewhere so it doesn't forget what the number is. We'll need to use it later on, otherwise there's no game. So can you remember from the previous lessons in this series what it is we'll use in order to store the number the computer's thinking of? If you said variable, well done, because that's exactly what we need to use. Let's click in the variables tab and make a variable. So this is the uh, secret number. So we'll call this secret number. There we go. And we'll also need a second variable and that will be the user's guess. So let's make another variable and call this guess. So whenever the user enters a number, we'll store that so we know we can then do something with it. Now, of course, we've created the variables, but on the right hand side over here, we can see they're being displayed. And if we're displaying the secret number, that's going to make the game a bit easy. So let's untick both of those so we hide them from the game area. OK, so now we're ready to set the secret number to a random number. So set secret number two. Now, how do we do a random number? If you've been exploring the code blocks on the left hand side, having a look through, please do. If you haven't already, you may have come across this already. It's in the operators section. That's the green section there. And you can see this bit here right underneath the main operators and above the greater than, less than, equal to relational operators. So pick random, there it is. Let's drop that into there. Now, for the moment, we'll have a random number between one and 10. But of course, you can make the game more interesting by having that between one and 100 or something. So there we are, we've got the secret number as a number between one and 10. We won't know what that is. What do we do next? Well, the thing to do next is to um, ask the user for their guess but it's unlikely that they're going to be right first time. So what we'll need to do is keep on asking them for their guess until they get it right. So we'll need to repeat something until they get it right. Let's have a look in control. And there is a block that says repeat until. So this is what we call a loop. And this will repeat all the next instructions over and over again until the user gets the question right or until they get the secret number right. So we're going to repeat until their guess is equal to the secret number. So let's go into our operators section and grab the relational operator that's equals. So we're saying we'll repeat until the number in the guess variable, so the user's guess, is equal to, is the same as the secret number the computer has thought of. So it's going to repeat this code over and over again until we get it right. 
So what is the code we need to keep on repeating? Well, of course, the first thing is we'll need to get the guess from the user. So let's go to sensing and ask for their number. So uh, what is your guess? And wait. Now, once they have um, entered their number, it'll be stored in the scratch block called answer. We'll need to transfer that over into the variable we made called guess. So let's go into variables and set the guess to whatever the answer is that they have entered. So now we have the number they've entered stored in our variable guess and we'll need to now ask a few questions. And these questions are going to be very similar to those we asked in the previous lesson in tutorial uh, seven, I think it was. So we need to then have an if block. Let's just zoom out slightly here and head over into control and grab one of our if blocks. So an if block, remember, is what we call selection. We'll give the computer a choice of things that it can do. And in this case, it's going to be a choice of three things. Either the number is right, the number is too big, or the number is too small. If it's right, we're going to congratulate the user and tell them well done. If the number is too big, we're going to say the number is too big. And if it's neither correct nor too big, it must be too small. So we'll tell them it's too small. So there are three possible results equal to more than less than. And our if block here only has two slots. So we need to duplicate this and have another if block, which we put inside the first one like that. So now we have if, and then we'll have a question, there's our first action, second action, third action. That's equal to too big, too small. Now, this, of course, needs to go inside our loop block. There's our loop block, our repeat until. So everything we want to repeat has to go inside that. So I'm going to drag that up and drop it inside just like that. So see, there's my repeat block and everything is inside it. So we ask the question, we set the answer into the variable guess, and then we start asking questions. Now, the first question we want to ask is whether the guess is right, if it's equal to the secret number. So let's grab the equals operator and drop that in there and then get the guess variable and ask whether that guess variable is equal to the secret number. Have they got it right? Well, if they have, we'll congratulate them. So we'll go to looks and grab a say block and tell them, um, congratulations, that's right. There we go. But of course, it might not be equal to. So if the guess is equal to secret number, that's the action we do. And that's it. That's all we do. Else, otherwise, if it's not equal to the number, what question do we ask? Well, we need to ask the question, is the number too big? Is their guess more than, bigger than the secret number? So we'll go to operators again and grab our greater than operator and ask the question, is the variable guess that they've typed in bigger than the secret number? Now, if the guess is a bigger number, if it's too high, then we need to tell them that the number is too high. So we'll say in there, that's too high. Now, what do we put in this bottom box? Well, there's only one more possible option. Either the number is right, or it's too big, or it's too small. So we don't need to ask the question if the guess is less than the number, we've uh, got the secret number, because that's the only thing it can be. So we'll put in there, that's too low. That's too low. And there we go. So now we've got our finished code. So this is probably the longest scratch program that you've done so far. And if we look through it, we can see that we are picking around a number to begin with. Then we are repeating 
everything else under it. See, all of that is inside that repeat block. And we're going to repeating it until the guess is right. And we're repeatedly asking them what's their guess, and then asking the question, is it right? In which case, tell them. Otherwise, is it too big? Tell them. Otherwise, tell them it must be too small. Let's run this program then. So we'll go into full screen and click the green flag. So what is your guess? Now, of course, we have no idea what the number is. Um, I'm going to go in the middle there and type five. OK, it's too high. So we know it's between one and four. Let's try typing in two. Oh, there we are. Congratulations. That's right. I got it right. Uh, let's try it again. So we click the green flag. Now, this time the computer has again chosen a random number. It's going to be different every time. So if I type in two, there we are. It's too low. It's not two again this time. Let's try seven. It's too high. So it's between two and seven. It's either three, four, five or six. Let's try five. It's too low. So it's between five and seven. I think I know what this might be. Let's try six. There we are. Congratulations. That's right. So there we are, your first simple game in Scratch using quite a lot of different programming techniques. As I said at the beginning of this tutorial series, this is really all about learning how to program using Scratch. A lot of tutorials on Scratch just talk about moving sprites around and making those simple Scratch games. <clears throat> and certainly I will be doing that in this series. We will be moving sprites around and doing stuff. And on this website, computerscience.click, if you're looking on YouTube, by the way, head over to computerscience.click. Uh, on there, there is a series of tutorials using Scratch, including uh, how to make your own Pac-Man game, how to make your own um, platform game and, and various things like that. So we will look at that. But this tutorial series is really just focused on thinking about the programming tools that you'll use in whatever language you end up using. So here so far, we've looked at input, output, variables, strings, numbers, operators, relational operators, loops, and selection statements. That's a lot of the core programming techniques. And I'll let you into a little secret. Don't tell other programmers this, but to be honest, that's almost everything you need to know about programming. There are a few other things, but to be honest, most programs simply use those techniques put together in different ways. If you've ever played with Lego bricks, you'll know that all right, you get a few fancy Lego bricks that just do one thing like a door. But there are basic building blocks, basic Lego bricks that you can put together in almost infinite number of different combinations to make everything from spaceships to cars to windmills to dinosaurs. And it's how you put them together, the order you structure them. And that's really what programming is all about. Programming isn't difficult. It's just simply thinking about how to put together those basic blocks that we've been looking at so far in interesting ways to do what you want the computer to do. Now, in the next video uh, in this series, before the next quiz, um, I'm going to look with you at how you can add a few more features to this game to make the game more interesting. So we'll look at that and I'll suggest a few things that you can think about as well when you're experimenting with this game. And then there'll be a quiz that looks at some of these techniques we've been looking at over the last few lessons. If you are looking at this tutorial um, on the computerscience.click website, then at the end of this course, there will be a certificate given to you if you pass all of the tests. You have to pass every quiz until you get to the very end. If you pass the last one, then you will get a certificate with your name on and you can print that off, as well as earning XP and levels and all sorts of other cool stuff as well. So head on over and have a look at that um, if you haven't already. So let's head over then to the next tutorial, number 10 in the series, looking at how to improve this game and make it more interesting.